Hello and welcome to The Bike Show. This week we come to you from that little corner of Italy in South Africa, which is Ducati Johannesburg. A little later in the show, we'll be catching up with all the news from the latest EICMA show in Italy. But first, Matt is trying to solve a problem. I am indeed, but it's the sort of problem that the vast majority of us can only ever dream of having to solve. You see, the bike I'm about to ride is a very rare answer to a little-ass question. If you get your bike kicks at a circuit, if you love the track day scene, what would be your ultimate fantasy track day weapon? A lot of possible answers spring immediately to mind, but the possibilities shrink dramatically when you consider what this owner wanted from his bike. It had to be a V-twin, so it would be competitive in Battle of the Twins and other racing championships at a club level. More than anything, it had to be light, because this bloke likes to go fast around the corners rather than down the straights. And one more thing, cost was not a factor. So it has to be a Ducati, doesn't it? Something like a race prep 1098 or 1198 or 1199 Panigale, maybe even the latest 1299 Panigale, or consider the million rand super leggera Panigale, but no, there's another way of going about things, and that's this, the NCR Milona R. It does have a Ducati engine, just not the one you'd expect. It's a 1078cc air-cooled lump, and if you're a proper engine nerd, you might recognise that this is from the original Multistrada. Being air-cooled, there's obviously no need for a radiator or all the hoses and water that come with it, and that saves a lot of weight. This engine is actually good for a surprising 115 horsepower, thanks to some internal mods, the exact nature of which you can decide when you order. Anything is possible, budget is the only limit. So you can have everything from larger valves, a lighter crank, extra capacity, or even a flux capacity generator. Housing this V-twin is a hand-built steel trellis frame that is also incredibly light, and bolted to each end is some top quality Olin's race suspension and to go with that, a set of Brembo's World Superbike Spec brakes. That's 2005 World Superbike Spec, by the way. Yes, this is a 10-year-old bike. But if you order one now, you'll still get this exact same model, but with newer components. This may be a 10-year-old bike, but the fact that it hasn't changed at all over that time period shows us a couple of things, I think. The first of which is, if the design works, don't bother to try and fix it and make it better. And secondly, this particular bike has been raced enthusiastically and less enthusiastically crashed right through the last decade. So reliability obviously isn't a problem. To get a feel for this whole Colin Chapman Lotus adding lightness thing, I really need a track. So I think I'll go get some practice at Port Elizabeth's Aldo Scribanti. This is a lovely little circuit, and apart from a 700 metre straight, it's two and a half kilometres pack in a variety of fast and slow turns. In its own way, it's possibly the most entertaining bike circuit in the country. So if you ever get a chance for a track day here, grab it with both hands. My early laps, well, they're a bit of a shock. This is a small bike with a proper racy riding position, so my aged wrists and neck are killing me after only a few minutes. I soon realised that the lack of lard, that's on the bike, not me obviously, means that I can brake ridiculously late and throw it around much more easily even than a well set up Supersport 600. Truth be told, I was feeling more than a little bit out of my depth. You see, the NCR is a proper little scalpel and I'm more used to wielding a big hammer and not very well at that. The thing is, the more I rode the NCR, the more it was all beginning to make sense. But the only way to get any more track time would be to enter the two races the next day on the Saturday. And uh, well, like all these ideas, they're great in the pub the night before. But when you get to the track at some ungodly hour, it's blowing a gale and you realize you'll be sharing the track with 28 other lunatics. It's not such a great idea. Aldo Scribanti's long run to the first corner meant I was definitely going to be passed by a few of the bigger bikes at the start. But my plan is to slip up the inside while everyone's being way too polite to each other on the brakes. 
and so it works. The NCR is a pleasure to hustle through the tight stuff, but I'm not fast enough to fully exploit the bike's potential in the turns, and I'm getting nailed good and properly at the end of the straight by the bigger horsepower bikes. To be fair, I never really get close to the NCR's stratospherically high limits, and the Milona must feel like it's on a relaxed breakfast run rather than in a race. To get closer to the limits would require a lot more track time and a bucket load more bravery, and neither of these things are available in a short 10-lap sprint. My two races turn out to be quite lonely affairs on the way to 8th and 9th places, interrupted only occasionally by the odd back marker on a smaller bike. And even though it's only a 12-minute race, my lungs are pretty chuffed when the chequered flag finally arrives. Look, even a little trophy for second place in bots. And that's the amazing thing, really. Even with a wobbly old fart like me on it, the whole adding lightness thing really works. I was able to mix it up with bikes that are making, well, nearly double the horsepower, but also, remember, carrying about 50% more weight, too. The NCR is a pure riding experience, an analog bike, well, in a world that's going digital, let's be honest. You know what? It may be expensive, but it's worth every single penny. How many pennies exactly? Well, a base model will set you back around 400,000 Rand. But if you get carried away with the NCR parts catalogue, you could easily spend double that amount. I know, I know, out of reach for most of us, but if you do fancy one, well, yours will be only the fifth model in the country. And how cool is that? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that is possibly the, the rarest bike we've ever tested on the bike show. I would say, without doubt, four of them in the country at the moment, and one bloke happens to own two of them. Well, that, to me, says that's pretty rare. <laughs> but what I really like about that bike, and you touched on it, is it's just an engine and a frame and wheels, and that's it. There's no electronics, there's no fancy gizmos. You get on, you ride. I love that. And compared to the bikes I was riding, you think of Ducati's latest stuff, it's traction control and ABS control and ride modes and quick shifter and down shifter and it's got nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's as pure as motorcycling gets. I have ridden one of those and what I really like is the lightness. I mean, you touched on it. That bike dry without any fuel or anything is 120 kilograms. That's 40 kilograms lighter than a MotoGP bike. Just think of... Oh. It's, it's, it's astonishing. It's insane. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. So 140 kilos fully fueled on the grid. You're 50, 60 kilos lighter than the Panigales and stuff there. So, yeah, extraordinarily rare and beautiful machine. And uh, like I said, the only way for you to ever get to see one since it's not road legal, you'll have to go to the track. Right, we'll be back after the break with some lovely fillings for your Christmas stockings.